What's going on party people? My name is Kyle and welcome back to the Farewell Party YouTube channel. Today we're going right back into a premiere draft of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Let's just jump right into it. Hope you guys are still enjoying the set. I'm having a bunch of fun. Um, I actually did one draft off uh, off recording last night. Went 4-3. Did a kind of a cool like green-white uh, mid-range deck. Though... It was uh, not exactly like a mount strategy. It was it was basically mono green, but the the white cards were all um, like mystical tethers, uh, lasso by the law, just kind of like removal spells. And then I was splashing red for a bruised tarl. It was a pretty cool deck, so uh, maybe um, we can try and do some cool stuff today. Jace reawakened is kind of cool. Maybe I want to try that out. Fibblethip is also interesting. Uh, Prairie Dog is awesome. I kind of want to try the the Mythic Jace, see what see what that can bring. Maybe like go like a blue white control route. But Prairie Dog is also really good in that archetype. And uh, speaking of that, also Jim Lightfoot is awesome. If we want to go down there, Vengeful Townfolk is also pretty cool. Not really into Jin of Fool's Fall. Uh, I do like Razzle Dazzler, but probably not first pick material. I don't think. Ambush Giga P, not super great. Uh, not into Dead Eye Duelists, neither am I for Sentry. Um, I think I kind of want to try the the Jace Reawakened here. Uh, the the better pick might end up being Prairie Dog, but this is just kind of a cool cool card. I you know you get to you get to draw, you get to exile something with three or less and plot it. So it's just kind of a a neat blue white synergy. Um, so if we're going, if we're going down blue-white control, first thing I'm looking at is a, is a counterspell here. Uh, Essence Capture is a little bit worse than your average counterspell, I feel like, because we're not necessarily going to be running a lot of creatures in this deck. Um, other things that can fit in, maybe Outlaw Stitcher? I mean, we could, we could just change this into a, another is it strategy like we've, we've been doing, uh, or we could go like a... Kind of a Grixis control, maybe? Failed Fording is also pretty good. Not into Bovine Intervention, because they... I mean, just getting a 2-2 back and limited is not very good. It's actually kind of a tough pick so far. Uh, but I think just raw power level Outlaw Stitcher has got to be the move. So we'll, we'll take that. Emergent Haunting is awesome. I would really, really like to play that. Um, you know, the more I read it, maybe Jace isn't really the blue-white control matchup type card. Because it really wants you to play stuff on your turn. So then maybe Emergent Haunting is not what we want to go down. The Holy Cow is really good in the blue-white archetype. Hmm. Kind of got to make a decision here. You know what? I want to I want to try something slower today, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and take the emergent haunting, and maybe holy cow can wheel, or lone shark. I'd be super fine with lone shark. Uh, I think with the with the set being a little bit slower, sees the secrets maybe gets a little bit better. Repulse is what we're looking for. That's awesome. Okay, so we are rewarded for trying to go maybe down the, the control route here. So we get to return target creature to its owner's hand and draw a card off of that. Servant of the Stinger is also really cool. We can tutor if we get like a big bomb. Uh, is it worth leaving blue for? Probably not. I think I still like Repulse better. Daring Thunder Thief is alright if we're going to be kind of the deck that doesn't do anything on our turn. But since we have Jace, I think we are just going to want to try and do stuff on our turn relatively often. Stop Cold would be a nice um, nice thing to get back. Nothing else looks too interesting. Uh, maybe I should start trying to prioritize some more lands. Or deserts, rather. Hmm. Not super thrilled with Binding Negotiation. I mean, it's just a discard spell. Spinewood's Armadillo is awesome. 
But do I want to go down the green route? Um, it's pretty, it's, I don't know, it's kind of a weird way to go down with the way I've picked so far. Uh, Slickshot Vault Buster might not be bad if we're able to commit crimes pretty often. Yeah, I think, I mean, other other cards, Armadillo and Prickly Pear are probably the best cards. But I think I'd probably just rather stay in blue for the time being. Uh, Treasure Dredger, not into. Dredger, not into. Rambling Possum is good, uh, but it's in the saddle deck and we're, we're pretty firmly blue now. Yeah, I guess another Slickshot Vault Buster. I'm not super thrilled with that, but... I could end up working. If I want to go the green route, I could could just take an ankle biter. And then Mourner Surprise is also decent. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to take a speculative black card here. Just see just to see what's open. Okay, so Hollow Marauder is actually pretty cool. Uh, if we get like some the Desperate Bloodseeker two drop black card that mills this could be kind of cool if we have like a blue black mill strategy type type deal. Other cards, I like Giant Beaver. Um, the Wolverine's awesome, but I think we're kind of not looking at red right now. Yeah, I think I'll take a I'll try the Hollow Marauder because it's a it's a four two flyer. On ETBs, you get a or any number of target opponents each discards a card. I mean that's just cool. Back for more is kind of interesting. Could we do like a Sultai? Ooh, that'd be cool. We could do like a Sultai reanimator deck. So this uh, this brings back a creature and it fights a fights a card. So this is just an awesome card to get at pick eight. Nothing else really we're we're really into. So might as well try it. I mean we've got we've got two recursion effects now. Now we just kind of need like some big things. Uh, once a, once again, here's another here's another thing that we can get stuff back with. Uh, this was pretty good in the Rakdos deck that we played yesterday. And then uh, Ambush Gigapede is actually not a bad uh, reanimator target, but I think I think I might just take the Lively Dirge here, just because so, we can we can bin a card and then immediately replay it. So we're going to go ahead and take Mirage Mesa as our first desert here because it's going to be great fixing um, and we're not really interested in any of these other cards. So now uh, splashing for green here actually doesn't make that much more of a difference. Decisive Denial. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. This is actually really cool for our deck. So I'm I'm going to go ahead and take that. So we can we can do a fight spell or counter, which is sweet. Let's try that. Boneyard Desecrator. Uh, I'll take it, but not super into playing that. And yeah, I'll take a Gigapede. Basically, last pick Gigapede. That's pretty cool. Boy, I've been opening up a been opening up a lot of great train heists, and uh, that's just not really where we're going here. Metamorphic Blast is fine if we're going like a control matchup. Um, I think it might be better now, since we know that the format's a little bit slower. Uh, other things I like, Jim Lightfoot, again, is really nice. Uh, Tyrant Scorn, destroy target creature with mana value 3 or less and return target creature to its owner's hand. That's pretty cool. And it's in our colors. Oh man, Consuming Ashes is in here. Boy, we'd really like to to wheel one of these, but I think we just have to take Consuming Ashes here. Because it exiles a creature, which is, like, huge in this format, I feel like. And it has upside. We can Surveil 2 if it's a, a mana value 3 or less. So looking for Bloodseeker Tyrant Scorn to come back, hopefully. Killing the Kid. You may cast a permanent spell with equal lesser mana value from your hand without paying its mana cost if you don't. This might be kind of interesting. Splashing for, for white and green now. 
But if we're playing Reanimator, this is kind of cool if we if we are like plotting or playing stuff from the graveyard, and we get to just like dump another thing from our hand. What else is in here? Oh wow, Shepherd of the Clouds is an awesome uh, white Reanimator. So it brings back a mana value three or less. Uh, we don't really have any mounts right now. Uh, the question is, do we want to go into a white? Oh no, Patient Naturalist is the is just the move here. Okay, so it's a it's a self miller. Maybe Kellen is kind of a cool. Uh, you know what? We'll take we'll take Kellen. Oh no, no, we took Patient Naturalist. Okay, too too late on the draw. Sorry about that. Okay. Um. Kind of an awkward pack here. I don't think there's really much that we're super interested in. Mourner Surprise is cool, but we already have one. So I'll go ahead and put it... I don't know, maybe... Hmm. Is Forsaken Miner good in this deck? Probably not, right? And Bristleback Sentry is a, a four power matters. Yeah, this is kind of a miss for for pack two here. Step between worlds, not gonna be into. Hmm. Another kind of a rough pack here. Wandering light. I think I just wanna stay in Soul Tie for right now. I don't I don't really see myself playing white. I think that ship might may have sailed once I didn't take the Kellen. So I'll take a I'll take a draw spell and see if we can make enough uh, like low value creatures that it doesn't really make a difference. Oh, Desperate Bloodseeker is really good. That's probably the one that we're taking. Cactarantula is awesome too. Skullduggery is awesome. This is a lot better pack for sure. Uh, not really into Tiny Bones joins up. For the most part, it's just going to be a one mana discard. Of Discard a card. Phantom Interference I do enjoy. Yeah, I think I just got to go Desperate Bloodseeker here. Hopefully get a Cactarantula back. Bonnie Pal, wow. Okay, are we... Man, that's awesome. Hmm. It's greedy, but do I just take it? I think the format might be slow enough that we can just take this. We do need creatures. We've got a lot of non-creatures right now. Take the Fall is also good. Skullduggery is also good. But I want to play with Bonnie Pal. I mean, she's huge and she makes a an Ox token. It's just an awesome card. Lone Shark is cool, but I don't know if we're going to be casting two or more spells all that often in this deck. It is just a decent body on a creature, though. I think it's probably better than Snakeskin Veil right now. Oh, wow. Really good reanimator target. As you can discard it to get a, a card so it's fixing, or you, you can get it for a land. Uh, so it's fixing, and then you can just reanimate it, get a 7-7 seven, seven with Reach and Ward 3. Awesome pick up there. Hmm. I don't think I'm interested in Metamorphic Blast. I think... I think I'll just take a Snakeskin Veil. Maybe, maybe we'll play it, maybe won't. I don't know. Here, I think I will take a Canyon Crab. Just take a Mine Raider there. Slickshot Vault Buster. And I'll take the Rare. We might end up playing that, who knows. Okay, so not interested in playing the rare here, Taiwakin, just not in our colors. Skewer the Critics is cool. Honest Rutstein is awesome. Okay, this is exactly what our deck is looking for. 
So whenever he enters a battlefield, I get to return a target creature from the graveyard to my hand, and just creature spells in general cost one less to cast. Sign me up for that. That's awesome. Other things that are good, uh, Desert's Dew is really good. I, I like Giant Beaver. Um, it'd be really sweet to wheel the Mirage Mesa, but I just don't see that happening. I mean, you got to take the Honest Rustine here. Right, so Servant of the Stinger is awesome. It's just going to be like a tutor for our good cards. That's pretty sick. Other things I like... Um, Cactorantula is also really good. I'd like to have at least one Cactorantula in my deck, if I can. Hmm, are we... Are we mostly black-green at this point? I feel like we can kind of just splash blue and kind of go more of a black green route, just like pure black green. And in that case, I think I want the Servant of the Stinger. So kind of a miss for us in this pack, I think. Betrayal of the Vault's probably just the best card here. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I'll take the Betrayal at the Vault. It's a cool it's a cool fight spell, or bite, I guess. You get to kill two creatures. Yeah, I'll take that. Oh, yes! Badlands Revival, that's awesome. Yes, that's exactly what we're looking for. We get a creature card onto the battlefield and just any permanent back into our hand from the graveyard. So sick. I mean, it's absolutely what we're going to take. Nothing else really even matters in this pack to us. Now I think we're just kind of looking for... Um, it basically... Uh, uh, ways to, to get our mana fixing in. Um, so Throw From the Saddle is awesome. We really do need some fixing, though. Oh, that's a tough one. That is tough. Throw from the saddle might be just a better card here, but we do have quite a bit of interaction in our deck already, so I think I'll just take the the fixing here. And another fixing is awesome here. Um, other cards, Jailbreak, Jailbreak Scheme is pretty cool, but I think we kind of have moved away from blue somewhat. I think we've got a lot of playables here, so I think... I will just take more fixing. I think here I will go ahead and take a giant beaver. Just because our four drops are a little bit light right now. Well, maybe it should be Dover Grizzly. Yeah, I'll take Dover Grizzly. Oh wow, Stubborn Burrow Fiend at pack, pick 8 is awesome. Yes, it's another mill mill target. So, we've got we've got this cooking. We might be we might be playing here today. This Oh, and another Mirage Mesa. Cool. Okay. Okay. I'm feeling I'm feeling better about keeping blue in here then. Oh, yes, and Cactarantula wield. Okay. So this deck is looking Pretty cool now. I think there's going to be quite a few decisions to make. I'll take another Gigapede, but probably won't play it. Yeah, sure. I am pretty excited about this deck. Um, get rid of that. Alright, so we got some deck building to do. Kind of a weird pile with the blue to like pivot in, pivoting into black green. But I think it's going to be cool. So Hollow Marauder is going to be awesome in this deck. 
Bonnie Pal is going to be probably our big splasher. Back for more. Awesome. We've got a lot of big stuff right now. So maybe, maybe Betrayal at the Vault's kind of on the chopping block at this point. Outlaw Stitcher, I think, is just a better card than Lone Shark, even though I don't really foresee us using or double spelling a whole lot. Okay, so what's what's bad here? Uh, Emergent Haunting is probably not no longer any good for us. Canyon Crab? I guess it's an alright staller. So is there... Do we really still want Jace in this deck? That's actually a decent question. So we can't play it till turn 4. And we're kind of off to the races by turn 4. So paying... Paying two blue for kind of a slow card for stuff that I'm not really thrilled about to to plot. So, I don't know. This could be wrong, but I think Jace is probably getting the cut here. Unless I just want to get rid of Snakeskin Veil. Uh, this could be wrong. Maybe I should just get rid of the... get rid of a Lone Shark. Yeah, we'll we'll get rid of a lone shark and see and and kind of regroup after a couple games. See see what's up. All right, so now we need to find out kind of how much to to work with here or land wise. Two, three. So seven sources for green. Or seven sources for blue. I think that's fine. Four, five, six, seven, eight. For black. Five, six, seven, eight. For green. Doesn't seem especially good, but we do have a lot of black early stuff. So maybe. You know what? We'll we'll roll with the current mana base and see how it works. I don't know, I haven't really, like, truly done a three-color deck in this format yet, so, I don't know. It could be could be a little bit scary here. It looks fun to play with, so... I'm, hey, look at that. Rewarded with all three colors. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so turn two, we're gonna, we're gonna discard the Spinewoods. And turn five, hopefully bring back the Badlands Revival. Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Hello. Oh, that's funny. I guess you can play Mourner Surprise for two just to get the Mercenary. Go ahead and discard. I'll get the Soured Springs. Good game. What's he good gaming me for? Oh, maybe I should have more than a surprise to bring back the Armadillo. And then I could just keep... Yeah, maybe I should have done that. That's a cool interaction. We can just keep searching our deck for, for deserts and stuff. I mean we're not we're not short on mana for sure. Uh yeah, let's go ahead and play Jace. That's cool. Do we want to plot anything? No. We'll just draw and discard. Okay, this guy is up to something. I'll go ahead and mute him. Desperate Bloodseeker. Really cool draw. Target myself. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, then, what do we bring back, then? I mean, we, we put the Armadillo onto the battlefield for sure, I think. 
and then bring back the Gigapede. Seems all right. I guess it does kind of depend. If they play like a two toughness creature, it's like an automatic kill spell. If we bring in the Ambusher onto the battlefield. And then we could, we could continue getting value off the Armadillo if we put it back in our hand. What does Tiny Bones do again? Oh, okay, so I think we do bring back the Ambusher Gigapede, right? So we can kill Tiny Bones so they can't touch our graveyard? The graveyard is only for us, sir. How dare Tiny Bones try and take this stuff away from me. Just block. Bloodseekers have done has basically done its job for us, so if they've got a combat trick, that's fine. So opponents on black white. Uh, we kinda I think we lost to that yesterday. What did they plot? Unscrupulous contractor. ETBs, you may sacrifice a creature. The target player draws two cards. It's kind of cool. So they, wow, they drew three cards off of that. That is actually a pretty cool combo. So they got a full grip now. Oh, that's horrible for us. Wow. So opponent has a pretty sweet deck. Now we can't kill the Tiny Bones, but he won't get in for damage unless they've got, like, a kill spell for our stuff. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Uh, we'll go ahead and draw card discard. Probably get rid of Outlaw Stitcher, I think. The green... And I think we'll Patient Naturalist into Mourner Surprise. Go ahead and bring back a green. Hmm. What's the best here? Probably the Armadillo. I'll swing in. We still got two pretty good blockers, so Tiny Bones cannot come back, or can cannot take our stuff. That was a pretty good humiliate, getting rid of our, um, getting rid of our Badlands Revival. That was pretty humiliating, to be honest. Okay. Both going after Jace. That's interesting. So they they still have to keep their mana up to be able to get value off the tiny bones. We'll just block the the highest toughness because death touch doesn't isn't yeah it's not death touch to planeswalkers so I'm fine. With that. Ah, you won't break my resolve. Size of denial is cool. Hmm. We just we've just got to get the spinewoods armadillo off I think. Uh, we'll draw a card off of Jace first. Oh, that's cool. Um, what should we get rid of then? Actually, maybe it is Decisive Denial, because Betrayal of the Vault's just kind of a better fight spell. Well, no, I mean, Betrayal of the Vault's pretty big, so... 
Yeah, we'll get rid of that. And then we will play Spinewood's Armadillo. Uh, we'll keep we'll keep a blocker up. So I'm not exactly expecting the armadillo to stay alive here. But now we've got back from war, which is sick. And if it does survive, we've just got betrayal at the vault. It's an instant, wow. Yeah. I mean, they they fully tapped out to to have that happen. So, I'm I'm happy with that exchange. So now we get him back. So we will go ahead. I think now is when we kill Tiny Bones because they're tapped out. They won't have a combat trick. They'll never get value off of us, which is cool. I'm in control here. Yeah, we'll go ahead and draw the discard. Yep, blue immediately bends. I will keep blue. Oh, should we keep that since it's an instant? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. We'll do that. Let the opponent think that we have nothing. Because then we can kind of decide what we want to kill, and I think we do want to kill the one of Griffin over anything else. They do get a 1-1 one -one out of the deal, but I'm not terribly interested in that. Or interested in uh, playing around that, rather. So, Armadillo. So we, we fight the Griffin, and kill the contractor, block with the contractor. Do we still want the Jace? Because we do open ourselves up to losing to a combat trick if we block here. Because it is just a fight spell, it's not a bite where we wouldn't lose dam or where we wouldn't take damage. It's risky. They were thinking pretty hard, so I think I'll, I think I'll let Jace pass away here. Because next turn we can just betrayal at the vault. Armadillo has Ward three, so there is no way to kill it right now. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. We're 26, so I'm just going to start swinging in. Good lord, it's like turn 10 and we're on 26 life. I think we probably want to wait. To, to cast the Betrayal at the Vault. So I think they're probably sitting on a counter, or not counter, but a, a kill spell again. A removal of some form. Armadillo's putting in work here. Pretty nagging. Yeah, I will go ahead and Betrayal at the Vault. Uh, contractor, and then Tiny Bones. So it deals damage, so it's not a it's not a fight, so Tiny Bones won't kill the Armadillo. I don't know if the opponent recognized that at first, but we'll see. If they pump either of these, I don't think it's very good for them. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, that was fine for them. And now they've opened the... Okay, never mind. So they do have a blocker. And we're stuck on lands. Get in for seven. They go down to ten. Play a swamp and pass. Probably doesn't matter that we're slow rolling the lands, but they're still getting in there, which is kind of interesting. They must have a way to kill the armadillo, so we really need to draw some action here. Or just a deputy? Okay. And they, they chose not to search. That's probably the right move there. Not, not bad. Now we got the mono green beats. So is that going to be his plan? Try and try and get something as big as the armadillo here. Got to keep sacking creatures for it to work. Could be tough for him. But we also just need to keep uh, keep drawing action here. Still attacking, bizarre. Yeah, I don't think I care. What are they planning to do here? Is it the... Whatever, the Outlaw's Fury, where everything gets plus two plus oh? No, it's just an attack for six. You just have lethal on board? What are they going to flash in here? For kill. Yep. Okay, weird, weird end to that one. Okay. But we're 1 0 on the day. Like this video for one win. Sorry about that. So pretty good start to the deck. We uh, we were able to outgrind a pretty grindy matchup, so that feels pretty good. That's something that we could not have said about earlier uh, earlier games and earlier decks that we've made. Another boy, this almost looks identical to the last opening hand, so we'll keep it. Play blue. Kind of another kind of want another blue. To come in here but not the end of the world if we don't get it we do need some early stuff or else we're just going to get steamrolled or we're just going to stare at each other all game which i'm totally fine with because i got a really slow hand on the play yep pretty good Still nothing to play. So this is where the uh, the three colors are coming to bite us here. Yep. Be nice if we draw a desert off the top so we can play. Oh, asking you shall, shall receive. Pretty, pretty good. Now we can play a, a Reacher, Cactarantula next turn. Do have to be careful that it'll get removed. Be honest, it probably will. But then we can just bring it back with the Badlands Revival. If we get another land, we can play Bonnie Pal. Is it Paul or Pal? Play Paul. I 
Whenever you attack, draw a card, then you may put a land from your hand on the graveyard to the battlefield. That is so nuts. Such a sick card. You know, I think we might just slam the Bonnie, Bonnie Paul if we get uh, if we get a land here, untapped land. Seems good enough to me. Oh yeah. Now we're kind of cooking. I think we do it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Six mana for 12 power. Seems reasonable. Okay. So they didn't have removal for the Bonnie Paul. That's probably pretty rough for them. I will say green for that. Do we just want to put more pressure on them? Or do we want to consuming ashes? I think we just want to get rid of the flyer now. Well, let's go ahead and attack. Oh, that's awesome. This is a sweet grip of cards right now, guys. This is so awesome. Getting in for six there. <laughs> Everything else I think we're, we'll just keep up for right now. We've got a counter for non-creature spells. We've got a consuming ashes. Just a disgusting, disgusting hand right now. Yeah, we'll go ahead and counter that. What say you, opponent? Interesting. Uh, I think I will pay that cost. So Shackle Slinger is going to be able to put a stun counter on Bonnie Pal, but I'll still be able to block. Or still be able to attack and get her triggers. I'm paying that too. <laughs> They're still getting in. Interesting. So what do we want to do here? I think we still kind of just want to keep up our instance and go ahead and attack here. Oh yeah. Value City, baby. We've got eight lands now. It's pretty sick. Now we can kind of do both removal spells next turn. That seems pretty good. Bonnie Paul putting in serious work. And the, the go big hand really didn't punish us at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. So they'll probably remove him. Yeah. Is this the token? So, okay, so the line to victory here is we kill Emergent Haunting or Exile it. We get to Surveil. It doesn't really matter at this point. Then we Repulse the Rope Master. Draw a card off of that. Then on our turn, we ambush Gigapede to give this Shackle Slinger minus two, minus two. And we get in for six. And that is our path to 2-0, and o, baby. That's two thumbs up now. Let's go. Feeling pretty good. This, is, this deck is awesome. I'm having a good time.
And I hope you guys are noticing the improved video quality because I'm a bonehead that uh, doesn't know what I'm doing for the first three videos. But I'm, I'm glad this deck is uh, getting its time to shine here. This is pretty cool. We haven't even really done much of the of the mill strategy so far. Like game one was, but game two was just overpowering with the, the Bonnie Paul, basically. Weird hand, but it has Honest Rutstein. I think I'm fine with that. We won't get value off of Honest Rutstein on turn three, probably. But we still just get the creature's spells cast, cost one less to cast, which is awesome. This might have been uh, not <laughs> not the not the route to take, but probably should have mulliganed. Oh well. Opponent is also playing green blue. Go ahead and throw out the Honest Rustine. Rustine could, in theory, make uh, make Outlaw Stitcher a little bit better since we're lowering the cost of some of these things, and we do still have low uh, low mana value creatures to play. Like that. So that is going to be a really nice combo. We're going to get a 1-3 Death Toucher. And then we're going to do Outlaw Stitcher to get the 1-4 and a 4-4. <laughs> yeah, I like that. No blocks, or no attacks. I kind of do want to start filling up my graveyard, though. Fibble Thip is cool. So they've got a they've got the cool green blue start plotting stuff deck. All three pretty decent cards. This is just a sick open here. Definitely want to draw some action next turn next turn. Possibly can get in this with the servant, which would be awesome. quite what we were looking for. So what do we do here? Do we put the pressure on? Yeah, let's go, let's do it. See what they do with the servant here. So Servant does get in. Oh, I didn't commit a crime. Ah. Oh no, I should have played the desert. Dang it. Oh yeah, that was a bad misplay on my part. Still did get in five damage. Whoops. Yeah, that was that was pretty rough. Go and uh, roast me in the comments for that one. Would not be surprised if I just lose this game. What did they plot? Canyon Crab. Okay. You can play Badlands Revival, but there's nothing to do. So now we're going to see if we can get in with the Servant here. Oh yeah, they made a mistake there. What are we gonna get? What should we get? Bonnie Pal. For sure, for sure it's Bonnie Paul. <laughs> this player. Even if they counter, we've got two ways to bring her back.
Yeah. <laughs> Servant of the Stinger into Body Paul. Tutoring for Body Paul. Oh my gosh, man. This is so awesome. Definitely the most disgusting deck I've made so far. Yeah. I mean, she still gets her triggers, so that's awesome. Ooh. If we back for more the Servant, is that just too greedy to, to bring back the Servant? We would commit a crime. Oh, no. No, that wouldn't be committing a crime. So we... Next turn, or on their turn, we could bring back Servant of the Stinger from the graveyard. It fights one of these. Back on our turn, we repulse to commit a crime and attack in to get another search. Yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, swing in for seven. Uh, well, actually, you should have swung in for everything, but that's okay. Oh, so Bonnie Paul doesn't get her trigger. So that's a little bit worse. But I can just bring back Bonnie Paul to my hand. Is that just better? Uh, we'll see. We'll see if they do anything worth fighting on their turn. Okay, so the token is legendary, so we just get... Bow. Another bow again. Maybe Repulse isn't the move if we're trying to push for lethal next turn. Just a 2-2 I think is fine. They're tapped out. I think we I think we back for more of the Servant of the Stinger again. And then we bounce the So if we bounce the the Warthog, we get in for what? One, two, five, so it's still not great. I think we just attack here and see what happens. Yep, kind of what I figured. Still got in for five, so that's pretty good. I think we'll go ahead and repulse our own thing. I think we do it now. Next turn, swinging in for a lot again. Ooh. That's cool. So not a bad green-blue deck from the opponent, but Bonnie Paul and Servant of the Stinger putting in serious, serious work. And we are 3-0. I don't even have enough thumbs for that, guys. And once again, we have hit kind of our goal. We are, we are already breaking even here. Like we always say, we are playing with house money. We got the big rewards. We've guaranteed that we won't totally bleed gems out of here. And most importantly, we're having a heck of a lot of fun. Desperate Bloodseeker. If we get a green Stubborn Burrow Fiend, is going to go off to the races. Got the Badlands Revival. Just kind of a sick opening hand if we, if we get the green here. Oh... That's cool. And we <laughs> dropped the green off the top deck. Okay. Whenever you commit a crime, you get a tap treasure token. Oh, that's awesome. Hmm. Maybe we'll keep her pulse up. Really, really want a land drop, so definitely want to play Repulse. 
So three mana, two mana. What's a better thing to repulse here? It's probably just the three mana. Yeah, we'll repulse it. Still needing a green. Not a green. <laughs> That's rough. This may be our first L in coming here. Yeah. I mean, this is the risky take, playing three colors, like solid three colors. I think we, if we get any land, I think we're just consuming ashes next turn. Wow. Okay. Yeah, this is looking rough for us. Dang, didn't we do this exactly yesterday? We uh, we went three and zero, and then just got got clocked for a little bit afterwards. Ooh. And now we got a discard down to hand size. That's brutal. Woof. Okay. Well, <laughs> bye bye, Outlaw Stitcher, once again. Oh well. These games happen. I mean, the, the deck is extremely greedy. Just look at these cards. What a beating. I mean, I'm excited for the opponent. They're popping off here. I kind of want to see the Magda go off. But unfortunately, I don't have enough things for, for crimes to be committed. So we got the green, but it's definitely too little too late. Um... I mean, I'd, I'd say I just need a body, but this is pretty rough. Yeah, we'll just go Patient Naturalist. Take another green. So Hollow Marauder is now down to four mana. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good game. <laughs> oh, and a Wily Duke. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a sick deck, man. This is awesome. This is just a cool deck. I'm not even mad about that. I'm I'm scooping. <laughs> I saw one attack. They, they got in for like 16. I'm good. Wow. That was cool. That was cool. This format is so much fun, guys. All right, humbled a little bit with one loss. Let's go. Dang, that popped off. Opponent is Hecaroni. Pretty cool hand. Technically have access to all three colors. Turn two Burrow Fiend, turn three Patient Naturalist. Awesome. Lively Dirge. I'm just kind of into all this. A second Mirage Mesa, interesting. Go ahead and put it put it down for blue. Oh. We just want to roll out the Servant of the Stinger. So Burrow Fiend isn't too great till we get a Saddler. Unfortunately, Servant of the Stinger is not a Saddler. He's only got one power. So maybe... Maybe we just want to... Yeah, I think we still want to... I don't know, that's kind of a tough decision, actually. Patient Naturalist or Stubborn Burrow Fiend? What is the play? 
Oh, I think it's Patient Naturalist because it's a pretty efficient blocker against the Drover Grizzly. Hopefully we can get a Crime Land comeback. Oh, we just whiffed. That's rough. Probably should have attacked with Servant there. Probably have a combat trick, but I'm not really interested in taking four damage. Oh. That's a pretty good trade. Back for more, awesome. Hmm. Do we want to bring back Patient Naturalist? That's... Yeah, that's pretty good. Ooh. Do we want to save that for next turn, though? Oh, no, we got the treasures. We can do both. Okay, so what do we want to dump, then? Bonnie Paul, probably? For sure it's Bonnie Paul. Then we can back for more once we get to six lands. Oh, and the armadillo got milled. And we got the crime land back. Yeah, that's good. I'm fine with trading Death Touchers there. We've already got we've already got our graveyard loaded up. Holy cow's good. So next turn we are going to play the Burrow Fiend, for sure. And then next turn we can back for more. We could slow roll it and play and flash in a Gigapede to kill the Holy Cow next turn. We'll go ahead and start milling. And a Cactarantula, heck yeah. So just a casual 2 mana 7-7 seven, seven. kind of demands your attention. That's pretty rough when a 2-mana two, two guy, a little little badger, demands that much attention. <laughs> oh, it's an instant, so let's hold it. So we'll go ahead and saddle. Get another creature, hopefully, or just land. It's fine. They can double block, which is really good for us. Or they're just chomping with the commando. Oh, they got the steer clear. That's fine. And now they're out of cards. This is just kind of mean. Yeah, gotta do it to him. That is disgusting. <laughs> Essentially 12, 12, 11 back from the graveyard. Goodness gracious. So awesome. Yes, please. Yep. Yeah. Feels good. Feels good to be uh, be uh, wielding this one. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. All right, we're at four wins. Don't want to jinx anything, but we are three wins from an elusive prize that I have not really had since basically 2020, I think, like when Kaldheim released. Granted, I wasn't really playing much, um, or haven't been playing much of, like, limited until, like, basically right now. I uh, wanna, wanna do Bloodseeker on turn two, so I'll go ahead and hit this for black. Yeah, so this is basically the first time I've been, like, really in-depth into limited. Um, I started getting more into it for LCI and have just kind of been playing more and more until now where I've obviously started the YouTube channel 
drafting a lot more. And boy, howdy, it's been a lot of fun. Decent mills there. Got a creature in, so I feel good about that. Want to get the green down, so uh, if we if we do run out of lands, we can spine woods next turn. Uh, otherwise, we can just play a second blue to get Jace and start getting value off of that, which feels pretty good. Oh, should have played Canyon Crab. That was bad. Canyon Crab hasn't been super great in this matchup. So I think we do want to spine woods to get a basic land. Or no, we want to probably the crime land. What do we have here? Just one green right now. Pestering Gulch is the one that we want. And then oh, we can still Jace. That's awesome. We'll probably dump the Canyon Crab if we're being honest. And you know, you know I like being honest, Mr. Redstein. Oh, we can bring back the Spinewood Armadillo next turn. Yeah, I like that. I like that play. Maybe you should have plotted the Honest Redstein. Block the Deep Muck. So opponents have really been wanting to to hit the Jace, so it, it must be powerful in some regard. Go ahead and play Festering Gulch. Go ahead and get the value off the Jace here. And I think we want to discard Hollow Marauder, or discard no, probably just another land. And then Honest Rustine. The reason why I wasn't necessarily thinking about... Um, or was was thinking about getting rid of the Ambush Gigapede is because Hollow Marauder is like super cheap now. But the Honest Rustine kind of offsets that, so I'm good with taking the Armadillo back here. And you know, Hollow Marauder's still three mana, so that's pretty pretty good. They're only tacking for three on Jace, so I think I'm fine. If they kill Jace, it's fine. We've gotten to loot twice off of him already. Pretty good turn from opponent there. Hmm. Um. So all these technically have more than three mana value, so we can't exile it, so let's just keep looting. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I like that. We have enough to play it this turn? I think we do. Oh, we have enough to play it right now. I'm... I'm Big Bonnie Paul goofing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Doing it again. I mean, play Bonnie Paul, usually win. Even if they do have a removal spell, it's still awesome. Five mana to bait out a removal spell and get and still have a 6-6 six, six left over. With a full grip of huge creatures. Um, I'll just block the overzealous muscle here. I'm not super into blocking the raven. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's fine. So mist on uh, on the mill there. What do we want to do? We've got six mana at our disposal. Let's go ahead and loot. Got six mana. We can play Hollow Marauder and Spinewoods Armadillo this turn. I think we just pitch the forest here. We can play Cactarantula in the Hollow Marauder. We could have played played the Armadillo and. And the Marauder at the same turn if we like pitch the Grizzly or something. Yeah, we're gonna attack in. Oh. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, I'm into that. Oh. Yeah, maybe we pitch the Armadillo again. Oh. They do kill the, the Bonnie Paul. So, main phase two, we'll just get the Drover Grizzly out there. Still feel pretty good about where we're at, because we can just Badlands Revival next turn to get the Bonnie Paul back. What else would we want to get back? Probably the Gigapede. Go ahead and draw a card, discard. Let me hmm. He's probably patient naturalist. Let's go Badlands Revival. Bonnie Paul. Ambush Gigapede. So gross. <laughs> so gross, guys. Yeah, uh, we're going to give everything trample here. Uh, yep. We're going to swing in. <laughs> Put a leg guard on the battlefield. Yep. And now we've got protection for Bonnie Paul. Okay. Good block on the Marauder. We're still getting in for 10. Perfectly happy with that. Oh, we got in for 12, sorry. Main phase two. Go ahead and show off the little stubborn burrow feed here. Opponent thinks my two mana up are probably just to play the Armadillo, but I do have a protection spell here. Exactly why we keep the protection spell. Opponent tried their hardest there, but now we have matched our, uh, our top win total for the for the season so far, we're five wins. This deck, it just keeps keeps on playing. Alright, apologies for that cut there. Um, once again, I am shackled by my job trying to talk to me when it is no longer time to talk on the weekend. But, I mean, not even that can really get my mood down at this point. We're at five wins. We got one loss. We're playing hard today. We're playing hardball for sure.
can we make it to two more wins? I don't want to jinx it, but I would love to get there. It's not a bad hand. Could be kind of risky. Do have to Mirage Mesa for black, I think. We're on the draw, which could end up being not great for us. Oh, that's good. Uh, we can... Oh, no, we probably want to keep the Servant, or we want, probably want to keep the Scoured Springs. So we can combo off with the Servant, hopefully. If we turn to Servant, and they don't have a play, and we uh, were able to attack, that's just going to be awesome. <laughs> Definitely got to go get Bonnie Paul, probably. They still haven't played anything. They've got to have a turn three play. Or else it's rough for them. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a heck of a turn three play. Wow. I mean... If they block here, then I get, I get my big card. Got to take the Bonnie Paul here. Oh, that's kind of a nasty combo. Do we mourn or surprise the servant so we can just keep getting stuff back? Yeah, I think that's pretty good. We'll try it out. We still got a decent blocker here. Chomp blocker. Plotting Spinewood's Paladin. Yeah, that's good. In theory, I'd like a removal spell for him. Hmm. So if we play Forest, we can double spell. But if we play... I think that's probably better, because we still get the mill off of the Desperate Bloodseeker, and next turn we can mill again for Patient Naturalist. But we really want to mill the blue here. Hmm. So they're going to have two big creatures coming back, so I think we do want to go ahead and double spell this turn. If we mill a blue here, that that's just kind of a feels bad, but we can try again next turn with Patient Naturalist. <laughs> and, you know, like clockwork we did, and we got rid of a, a removal spell, a good removal spell, which... I mean, we were going to mill anyway, so it's not the end of the world, I guess. Yep. Yeah, we might just get steamrolled here. Tumblewag is just awesome. Yep, not not necessarily interested in taking 10 damage there. So we'll take 5 next turn. Please get us a blue or else we just kind of lose. It's a slow blue. But it is a blue nonetheless. we combat that next turn? I mean, we, Bonnie Paul still loses the tumble to the Tumblewag pretty badly. <laughs> Just an awesome card. Yep. Lock the 10-10. Not much we can do about the 6-5. Yeah, we got a windmill slaying the Bonnie Pal. That's how you know this card is good when when you're playing Bonnie Paul on the back foot and they're just kind of blockers.
Interesting, they didn't attack. I think we want to go ahead and play Jace. The pieces are scattered. Go ahead and draw and discard. Each one has, I'll find what I need soon. Not finding many answers here. Play the Festering Gulch. Play the Flyer. Make them discard. Still feels pretty precarious. Yeah, 18, 18, with a hot 16 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. Trying to squeeze out Bonnie Paul for all it's worth right now. Oh. That's cool. <laughs> oh, man. It is cool. I don't necessarily think it's good enough because you still got the the tumble wag, but you still. Oh man. So we get in for. Boy, that's that's a weird one. I think we do have to just go ahead and bite down on those two, so they're left with the tumble wag. We can't attack with everything. Whenever you attack, draw a card. So, we want to get in for seven, I think. No, we just want to get in for six. Hmm. Next turn, Cactarantula. We do unfortunately have to block with the 8-8. Eight eight. Yeah. Yeah, got a block here. Eight eight, just the the strongest chump blocker you've ever seen. Oh wow, do we have anything worth bringing back right now? Spinewood's armadillo, yeah. Okay, okay, and stubborn. Hmm. Oh. So we've got five, six, seven, eight. Let's go ahead and draw and discard. I think at this point, Snakeskin Veil is probably not great for us. Play the land. Gotta bring back Spinewoods or Badlands Revival. Spinewoods Armadillo. And I think maybe the Flyer? The flyer's gonna be super cheap. Yeah, I think that was probably good enough. We get in for six. Target opponent draws a card, or discards a card. They're fully untapped, which is scary. We'll get in. Repulse would be awesome on the tumble wag. Survive and win? Is this a survive and win? Ooh. Oh, I think we pulled it out, guys. So, let's go ahead, loot, see what's up. I uh, don't think we need the dirge anymore. 
So yeah, we... <laughs> okay, guys, we got it. We got it. Never a doubt. Never a doubt. Let's go. Let's go, guys. We're at six wins. We're at six wins. We got three tries to trophy. Or two more tries to trophy. My bad. Can we do it? Bless the run. Bless the run, please. I want to get there. I think I might finally know how to draft this set. Those first three videos were just a test run, guys. Face and Boring Clex here. Hmm. It's pretty... I mean, it is... It's kind of... It's got the stuff that we want, we just have to make it there. And the 05 is a pretty good spot to, to get us there. I mean, 05 is just a really, really good blocker. We need... We need to draw lanes. We are on the draw. Gotta land. Definitely need some more black, though. I mean, it's just juiced if we make it to the late game. <laughs> and we got the black. Cool. Don't want to play it. But. Okay, so since we're, since we're asking for stuff, can I get a second blue for Bonnie Paul? No? Okay. Go ahead and play the Honest Rusting then. So I think Honest Rusting's value with the, the second ability is just good enough. But it does it is kind of a feel bad to play him so early. Ooh, patient naturalist is good. Let's hopefully get that too. Or the get that blue. Oh we got the blue. Oh we got the blue. Then we can turn five a Bonnie Paul. That seems pretty good. We'll stay back for right now. I'm good with chilling. Oh, and we got the bag for more in hand if they have removal. Okay, they've got their own rare. So when control, have haste. When Hellspur Posse Boss enters the battlefield, hit two. Okay, so it's three bodies for four mana. That's it is good for the opponent. They're gonna make us work for it, for sure. But I just... I don't see a world where Bonnie Paul just doesn't totally outclass them. Yeah, I'll pass. Okay, so they're getting some... They're on the value train. Um. Oh, definitely want to keep back. Do I want to take five? I don't think so. I, I mean, this is literally the only reason the crab has been in this deck the entire day. It's done absolutely nothing else for us. Bonnie Paul? Bonnie Paul, anybody? <laughs> And then if they do happen to get rid of it, back for more? Are you back for more? Alright, they're gonna try and juice these guys up. I think since we've got the back for more coming up on deck, I'm good with... Uh, no, I think Honest Redstein's now done his job. They have a combat trick, that's fine. That's even more fine. Go ahead and swing in. For casual 12. Yep. Or now it's 13. Do something about it, opponent. Double block. I like seeing the double blocks.
Yep. Two, four, six, seven. So I can't play anything else. Got to keep them back for more going. Yep. Wow, they fully tapped out for that. Yeah, I'll get rid of the Gigapede. Little do they know, I actually want to be doing that. Just attacking for four. Yep. Back for more. <laughs> yeah. Love that. Want to keep him. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and attack in then. Take one. Probably just gonna chump block. I mean, they kind of have to. Opponent's making us wait for it. Let's go, opponent. Is he salting out? If he's being salty, then I'm perfectly okay with it. We're gonna let this ride out, guys. If he's being salty... Hey, man. It's a game. We're here to have fun. So, if you guys enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. This is absolutely the best deck that we made. It's not even close. It might be the best deck that I make all season. I mean, just... <laughs> Mr. Vorinclex here is is uh, giving you all you need to know about this deck. I mean, it's we're we're roping people in limited right now. Let me know down in the comments what you thought about this deck. I mean, it's to be fair, the the deck without Bonnie Paul is probably not nearly as good, but Bonnie Paul. Boy, she's so good, I really, I might just have to make a commander out of her, just in, in my own personal life, in paper magic, the real world. <laughs> yep. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now rope yourself to a loss. That really is the most un unfun thing about Arena, is people roping. Just, guys, we're just here to have, we're just here to have fun. We're here to play a game. If you lose some, you lose some. I mean, you, you saw me earlier, like, when, when we lost our first game. It's like, I was just, I was giggling, because the opponent just had an awesome deck. There's just nothing else you can do about it. Well, Vorinclex here just decided to be upset. So we're going in on him. What a beautiful way to get our first trophy of the season, too. My first trophy in like four or five years, man. Hey, this YouTube thing is really working out for me, huh? Give it to me. Big Clexi. Yes, we got the seven wins! We trophied, guys! We trophied!
So awesome. And we got a welcome to Sweet Tooth. Big, big old birthday cake to, to top it all off. Look at that. We got our 2200 gems and six packs. Let's take a look at this deck. Let's, let's give it a victory lap. I mean, just card of the day, card of the century, card forever. Bonnie Paul and her beautiful bow. Gosh, I love that ox. Back for more, incredible. I mean, just everything at the top end just really, really mattered. Even the Hollow Marauder was awesome when we were casting it for like two or three mana. Badlands Revival and Back for More, just disgusting. Consuming Ashes didn't even really get to play with it all that much, but it, I mean, it's just premium. Outlaw Stitcher, kind of an awkward inclusion in this deck, but we did get a 4-4 out of it in one game. Canyon Crab, hey, it took to the seventh game to give value out of it, but boy, it made that guy rope. Really, really impressed with Jace, actually. We, you know, being able to loot from turn four onward was just really awesome, and it was kind of a heat sink for, uh, for our opponents. People just really, really wanted to kill this thing, and I was perfectly happy to let them do it because we were working on the big boys over here. Honest Rutstein, I may have to reevaluate re because playing it on three mana is maybe not as good as what a lot of people thought, but I don't know. It is kind of a pseudo ramp spell, so in, in this strategy, I think it is still just pretty good. Overall, awesome, awesome deck. Even Snakeskin Veil got in there to protect one of our guys. Just incredible, guys. I mean, it's... What, what else can you say? If you enjoyed this video, please like and comment and subscribe. Farewell, party people.